Everybody praise the Lord. Good morning, everyone. Great morning for you. And gracious morning for everyone in Jesus' name. This is our last session. We've done Psalm 23. We've done Psalm 27. And if you are not here, can I humbly plead that you get hold of the message because the three are together and they will bless your life. Yeah. Even if you are here for 23, 27, now 24, it will be good to access the message. So the message is so that there will be a continual blessing for you in your life in Jesus' name. Let's have a word of prayer. Father, we thank you and bless your name. We glorify you, Lord, for who you are, what you are, what you are doing, what you have done, what you will yet do. We're asking, oh Lord, that in every life today, you bring your grace and you bring your goodness and you bring godliness and holiness into every heart, every life in Jesus' name. We're asking, Lord, that your very nature you give unto us. Take the nature of the first Adam away from us. And the nature of a Lucifer away from every one of us. And give us the very nature of the holy God of heaven. So that, Lord, as we worship you here on earth, we'll worship you too in heaven eventually. Do good in every life today. In Jesus' name we pray. God bless you. You can sit down. We're coming today to Psalm 24. And in Psalm 24, we're reading from verse 1. Psalm 24, we're reading from verse 1. The Lord, uh, the earth is the Lord's, and the fullness thereof, the world and they that dwell therein. Then in verse 2, it tells us, For he has founded each, that is, he has founded the earth. He has stationed the earth upon the seas and established it upon the floods. Verse 3, Who shall ascend into the hill of the Lord or who shall stand in his holy place? Verse 4, They he that has clean hands and a pure heart who has not lifted up his soul unto vanity nor sworn deceitfully and he shall receive the blessing from the Lord and righteousness from the God of his salvation. This is the generation of them that seek him, that seek thy face, O Jacob. Verse 7, lift up your heads, O ye gates, and be ye lift up. Ye everlasting doors, and the King of glory shall come in. Who is this King of glory? The Lord strong and mighty, the Lord mighty in battle. And then in verse 9 it says, Lift up your heads, O ye gates, even lift them up. Ye everlasting doors, and the King of glory shall come in. Who is this King of glory? The Lord of hosts. He is the King of glory. Amen. Amen. We're looking at this psalm today and the topic is the trustworthy possessor. With all time, supernatural sovereignty. He rules. He reigns in a supernatural way. And he is the possessor of the heavens and the earth. He is the possessor because he is the creator. He created the heavens and the earth. And the whole earth and the whole world belongs to him. And he is the sustainer. He is the one that sustains all 
that he has made he is the upholder he didn't just create the world and then abandon the world he is also the uh, sustainer and the upholder of the whole earth and because his possessor he possesses the earth he possesses the people that dwell in the world we can trust him if he has created us he's able to do everything we expect everything we ask him everything he has provided through the lord jesus christ through our savior redeemer shepherd because of that he is trustworthy and is all time supernatural all time before creation supernatural and at the time of creation supernatural after creation it was supernatural until today and forever it says i am god i change not and it's only begotten son the same yesterday today and forever supernatural sovereignty and rulership and dominion and governorship of the whole universe that's what we're looking at today and we're the Dividing the message to three parts. Number one, the indisputable possessor of heaven and earth. Who else will be the possessor of heaven and earth? Is it Lucifer? Not at all. Is it man? Not at all. All those people that have lived and died, is it any of them that will be the possessor? No. The indisputable, unarguable, undebatable possessor of heaven and earth. Number two, the indispensable purity of heart for the eligible when i say the eligible now he has all the world and he possesses everyone he created everyone he's giving us accommodation here habitation here he, he, he put us where we are and this accommodation he has given us he said is temporary and it's a time of probation he has another habitation he has another accommodation over there let's say for example you are a landlord and you build a moderate house and you put tenants there and you are watching them and then you go to build another one state of the art accommodation on the hill and these people they are applying they say they want to be there he says well i'll check out how did you spend your time in the first accommodation in the lowly accommodation in the earthly accommodation how did you spend your time there and he selects the people that have lived in that first accommodation he says you you are qualified you are eligible and it takes them to the second final accommodation on the hill the god of heaven has given us chance to live here and in this time of probation he wants to see how we have lived and then when we finish with the accommodation here he says you are eligible you are eligible and then he takes us to the accommodation up there in heaven if we live according to his will according to his desire according to his demand in the on the earth here only then are we going to be the people that are eligible on the other side number two is the indispensable purity of heart for the eligible number three the indescribable prince of heaven throughout eternity the king of glory lift up your head so ye gates and let the king of glory come in who is this king of glory he is the lord mighty in battle and then he comes in are you not surprised he said the second time again lift up your heads O ye gates i thought he had entered in already and then it says lift up your heads again O ye gates and let the king of glory 
coming the first time he came actually he came to die for your sin for my sin and for the sin of humanity and after that after he died he was buried and he rose again and while talking to his own disciples then he was taken up and they were looking at him he was to enter that time after his first coming on the earth and then the angel said lift up your head so ye gaze and let the king of glory is brought many sons unto glory and is lived a glorious life there on earth and he wants to come in now let the king of glory come in and then they open the door and the king of glory comes in he's there now but then is still coming because the antichrist will try to take over the whole world and will try to possess the world and then christ will come after seven years of the great tribulation here on earth and he comes and he establishes his millennial kingdom and then after that he's still the king of glory and he still now needs to go in there the second time that's why it says lift up your heads O ye gates and let the king of glory it's been glorious in the millennial kingdom kingdom it's been glorious in defeating and destroying the power of the antichrist he's coming as the lord of battle and the lord that conquers and because he has conquered and all the heavens said now this is the final one the second one and let the king of glory come in and they open the door and the king of glory comes in now we're here today in preparation for the time when those gates will open and you will go in with the king yeah. you know the king at that time when he went the first time let the king of glory come in he went all alone by himself and he left his disciples his sons and servants and saints he left them in the world here and he said go preach the gospel to every creature but now when he comes the second time and he establishes the millennial kingdom and then is to go on and the king of glory is to enter in and all his saints will follow him yeah. and you where are you there <laughs> you will be there in the company of the saints when the saints go marching in i will be there and you will be there let those everlasting doors open and the king of glory will come in number three the indescribable prince of heaven throughout eternity let's come to number one number one the indisputable possessor of heaven and earth look at genesis chapter 14 reading from verse 19 it says and he blessed him and said blessed be Abra abraham the of the most high god god the possessor of heaven and earth god the possessor of heaven and earth look at verse 22 in verse 22 and abraham said unto the king of sodom i've lift up mine hand unto the lord the most high god the possessor of heaven and earth melchizedek said it is the possessor of heaven and earth abraham also said it is the possessor of heaven and earth look at verse 23 in verse 23 that i will not take from its thread even to show lashed that and that i will not take anything that is thine king of sodom now lest thou shouldest should say i have made abraham rich god made abraham rich not the king of sodom the god of heaven will make you rich yeah. three things we're looking at number one the preeminence and 
universal supremacy of God. Number two, the property and undeniable subjects of God. Number three, the people and the unique sons and servants of God. Number one is the preeminence and universal supremacy of God. In um, Psalm 24 verse 1 it says, The earth is the Lord's. The earth, the whole earth, belongs to the Lord and the fullness thereof. The world, the whole of the world, and they that dwell therein by creation. He created the world. You built the house. Nobody else helped you. You built the house with your resources. And so you possess that house. God created built the earth with his resources and nobody else loaned him from any bank anywhere to create the earth and to create the world therefore he is possessor and he has universal supremacy over all the earth it says in verse 2 it says for he has founded it upon the seas and established it upon the floors. He tells us in Colossians chapter 1, reading from verse 16, it says, For by him were all things made, nothing taking away from that everything you see everything you cannot see the sea the ocean and the depths of the sea and the forest and all the things all the minerals in the earth it says for by him were all things created that are in heaven and that are in the earth visible and invisible whether they be thrones or dominions or principalities or powers all things were created by him and for him all things were created by him and for him let's come to number two here number two is the property and the undeniable subjects of god the property everything belongs to him you and i belong to him it tells us in deuteronomy chapter 10 and i'm reading there from verse uh, reading from verse 14 deuteronomy chapter 10 verse 14 behold the heaven and the heaven of heavens is the lord thy god the earth also with all that therein is the old testament said everything belongs to the lord what does the new testament say the same thing there is no contradiction between the old and the new between the new and the old the old tells us the earth the world everything belongs to the lord and the new testament look at first corinthians chapter 10 and we're reading from verse 26 first corinthians chapter 10 verse 26 for the earth is the lord's and the fullness thereof out of the mouth of two or three witnesses the truth shall be established and confirmed it says the earth is the lord's and the fullness thereof what's the conclusion of that if the earth belongs to the lord if god created the heavens and the earth if he's so mighty and so powerful and he's not changing he remains the same if he had the power at that time to create everything what conclusion can I make look at chapter 32 of Jeremiah chapter 32 of Jeremiah verse 17 ah Lord God behold thou hast made the heaven and the earth by thy great power and stretch out arm and there is nothing too hard for thee that's the conclusion if God could create and sustain and uphold the whole universe is so mighty and powerful that nothing in your life will be hard for him 
if he needs to create anything in your life he will do that again and create if he needs to sustain any blessing he has given you he will sustain that blessing if he needs to uphold you when the winds are blowing and when the storm is raging and he needs to uphold you in the midst of that storm our lord god behold thou hast made the heaven and the earth by thy great power and stretch out arm and there is nothing in your life in my life in your ministry in your place of work there is no request there's no demand there's no prayer that is too hard for him he will do it look at number three here number three here the people and the unique sons and servants of god the people of god already we've read it in a psalm 24 verses 1 and 2 look at exodus chapter 19 i'm reading from verse 4 ye have seen what i did unto the egyptians and how i bear you on eagle's wings and brought you unto myself now he's separating some people from the rest of the world he's separating israel and all their millions away from the people of egypt and he said i took you up i bore you i bear you up on eagle's wings and i brought you unto myself look at verse 5 in verse 5 now there for if ye will obey my voice indeed this makes us unique that we come to the lord he has saved us he sanctifies us he purifies us he makes us holy he makes us unique and different from the people of the world and he says if ye will obey my voice indeed and keep my covenant then ye shall be a peculiar treasure unto me above all people for all the earth is mine all the earth is mine all the earth by creation is mine but the people who single themselves out separate themselves and they come out of the great multitude of the world they become the unique peculiar people of god and he says you become a peculiar treasure unto me and then in verse 6 we're told and you shall be unto me a kingdom of priests and an holy nation these are the words which thou shalt speak unto the children of israel and these are the words coming to you today you'll belong to god peculiarly first corinthians chapter 6 and we're reading from verse 19 first corinthians chapter 6 verse 19 watch do ye not that your body is the temple of the holy ghost which is in you uh, do you see how, how do you see how peculiar that is the idol worshippers do not carry their idols inside their belly inside their heart inside their body the idol worshippers can't do that all the people that worship strange gods they cannot have they cannot swallow their own idol and then they're walking about but jesus said behold i stand at your door if anyone opens the door i will come in and sup with him and fellowship with him so you say watch don't you know if you are born again don't you know if you have given your heart to christ don't you know if you are not just in religion religion like any other idolatrous religion don't you know that if you are born again you are a child of god that ye are not your own he says no you're not that your body is the temple of the holy ghost which is in you which ye have of god and ye are not your own then in verse 20 in verse 20 <coughs> god bless you all it says in verse 20 for ye are bought with a price ye are bought with a price the price of the blood of jesus is therefore glorify god in your body 
when you, when you say glorify God in your body, it means that all the actions of your body, all the demonstrations of your body, all the use of the skill of your body, you glorify the Lord. And that's not just on Sunday, every time, every day, every moment, what you do, what you think, how you live, how you talk, how you converse, you glorify God in your body and in your spirit. Not only in your spirit, in your spirit, in your body, in your heart, in your language, in your behavior, in your character, in your skill and your servanthood. Everything you do, it says glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's. First Peter chapter 2 <clears throat> first peter chapter 2 reading from verse 9 but here a chosen generation a royal priesthood and holy nation we must be different from the larger nation the human nation if they are corrupt we must be holy if they cheat and lie, we must be straightforward and honest. If they are defiled, we must be so different that they will know that the difference between us, the people of God, and the world is the difference between white and black. And you cannot mistake that anyone who says, you know, I belong to God, I'm a child of God, I'm a servant of God, and is eating sin like they in the world are eating sin, drinking sin like they in the world are drinking sin, corrupt financially, corrupt in the family, filially, corrupt in the language of their mouth and they say they belong to god no 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 if you belong to god you'll be different he cleanses us he saves us he changes our lives he changes us from the inside and our lives become totally different because he has chosen us a chosen generation a royal priesthood and holy nation a peculiar people a peculiar people you, you know the people of the world if they look at you and they smile at you and they say wonderful you're just like us and you know some people will take pride in that they say you know i'm a social person and i try to be like the people i don't want to be different for them to see me as you know totally different from them they are not a real christian a real christian the people of the world will say he's peculiar his language is peculiar he does not gossip with us he is peculiar he does not peel far he does not steal with us he is peculiar he does not use his body she does not use her body to get promotion if they will not promote her she'll stay there until the promotion will come from the lord and he is not a psychophant that will be saying yes or yes or yes madam yes madam and in the heart he doesn't this man is peculiar he fears none he fears nothing and he lives his life to the glory of god it's when you are peculiar and the people can tell and the peculiarity is visible that's when you become a unique child of god a unique son a unique daughter a unique servant it says but ye are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, and holy nation, a peculiar people that ye shall show forth. Show it forth. You got your place at the work in the morning. Show it forth. You come to your family. Let the beauty of holiness be reflected in your life. Show it forth. Anywhere you find yourself in your family, nuclear family, extended family, show it off that they should 
show forth the praises of him who has called you out of darkness into his marvelous light and everybody said amen, amen. we're coming to point number two here number two here the indispensable purity of heart of heart purity of heart for the eligible we're coming to uh, psalm 24 and i'm reading from verse 3 verse 3 says who shall ascend into the hill of the lord or who shall stand in his holy place and then the answer comes in verse 4 he that has clean hands and a pure heart who has not lifted up his soul unto vanity nor sworn deceitfully three things we're looking at number one the question number two the qualification number three the quest number one the question for every soul in every generation the question you need to ask why you are here on earth the question for every soul in every generation number two the qualification for sure entry with evident godliness that's the certificate that the thing the ticket that allows you when you leave here to go to the next level the next accommodation the qualification for sure entry with evident godliness number three the quest of sincere seekers after the eternal god let's look at number one number one is the question for every soul in every generation in psalm 24 reading from verse 3 who shall ascend into the hill of the lord or who shall stand in his holy place understand david was a king david you're a king already why are you asking who shall ascend to the hill of the lord doesn't your royalty your kingship qualify you he said not really why tell me saul was king before me and i'm sure he didn't make it ahab was a king he didn't make it jeroboam was a king he didn't make it kingly position royal position kingly authority royal authority does not qualify anyone to get to heaven something must happen in the heart in the life of the person that's why david wanted to know who shall ascend into the hill of the lord or who shall stand in his holy place look at mark chapter 8 verse 36 in mark chapter 8 verse 36 for what shall it profit a man if he gain if he shall gain the whole world and lose his own soul the question for every soul in every generation the question everyone should be asking if i got this and got that achieved that possess that if i miss heaven it says what shall it profit a man a woman any person if he shall gain the whole world and lose his own soul the question for every soul in every generation look at verse 37 or what shall a man give in exchange for his soul or what shall i give in exchange for my soul luke chapter 12 we're reading from verse 20 in luke chapter 12 verse 20 but god said unto him thou fool now when it said thou fool it doesn't mean the man did not have the wisdom the strategy 
the acumen to gather the things of the world this was a laboring man an intelligent man and this was a proactive man when it comes to doing the farming and getting the crops and getting the crops to the barn and preserving that man preserving the crop that man adds something here intelligence but only intelligence to match the people who are getting wealth in the world why did god call him a fool he didn't think of the future of eternity of where he will spend eternity and god said unto him thou fool this night thy soul shall be quiet of thee then here comes the question whose shall those things be which thou hast provided the question for every soul in every generation now Let's say, for example, a man were to die today, and he looks back, and let me help you. Let's say I was to die today, and then at the point of death, what do I remember? I remember that I'm a university graduate. I remember I had first class. I remember I've been a teacher of mathematics. I remember I've been a preacher. And then God said, is that all you have? If that's all you have, certificate and money and bank account and the things of this world, the Lord will call the person a fool. But if you have salvation, if you have connection with the Almighty God, if there is conversion, if your life has been turned around and then you rejoice not because any of any of these things, but you rejoice because your name is written in the book of life in heaven, then you answer the question that you are not just a man for the earth, a woman for the earth, but you have something in glory and the grace of God has entered your life has walked in your life and by the grace of God you'll be there up in glory and let's look let's look at number two here number two the qualification for sure entry with evident godliness he has asked the question now the lord is going to give the qualification how we enter it says in psalm 24 verse 20 verse 4 he that has clean hands and a pure heart who has not lifted up his soul unto vanity nor sworn deceitfully here God himself gives the qualification number one clean hands you understand when somebody talks to us talks about somebody else and they say that man is a jovial that man is a social man and that man is a, you know he's a very nice man and then they whisper don't let them hear but his hands are not clean that says a lot and that says everything he has this he has this he has built this he has built that he is popular and is known by everyone but do you know his hands are not clean and we understand that and the king is saying and david is saying if we're going to get over there the reason why they say the hands are not clean we must go to christ and be washed in the blood of the lamb all the stain all the sin all the secret things that will disqualify us we need to take ourselves to the lord and be washed and be cleansed come now let us reason together says the lord it says do your sins be as scarlet they'll be washed whiter than snow if ye be willing and obedient ye shall eat the good of the land and then he says and a pure heart peaceful on the outside 
but also having purity of heart that's what the lord jesus christ prayed for for the disciples he said father holy father heavenly father sanctify them through thy truth thy word is truth that's what peter spoke about when he came back from the house of cornelius and he made no difference between us jews and then gentiles purifying their hearts by faith and that's what john the beloved spoke about he that has this hope in him purifies himself even as christ is pure he that has clean hands and a pure heart who has not lifted up his soul unto vanity and as you read the old testament and the new testament too the idols are vanity they're vain and when you say you're worshiping the lord you worship him in truth and in truth on sunday you worship him on monday tuesday wednesday thursday friday saturday before you come back on sunday to worship the lord you're not going to lift up your eyes your faith your dependence on the vain idols the people are like chameleons when they are there on sunday they look good they look clean they look all right like god's people and then when they go back home they depend on those vain idols they said those who are chameleons like that they're neither there nor there he said we should remind ourselves jesus does not say i know my chameleons but i know my sheep they hear my voice and they follow me the people who are not having double standards in a way they behave in the church another way very different and dirty they behave at home those are not the people that are going to heaven it says they have not lifted up their soul unto vanity nor sworn deceitfully if you tell me what does that mean no sworn deceitfully he said as a king a seat on the throne and that throne is the royal court and people come to me and they talk about themselves and they talk about other people and i look at them and i say what you are saying is that real you come to the king's court and you testify and the testimony it was put in the mouth of the woman and david said tell me woman it's not the hand of joab with you in this matter have you not come to testify deceitfully have you not come to bear witness sworn deceitfully and she said o king thou art like an angel and nobody can hide anything from you and now here comes david answering the question who shall ascend to the heel of the lord who shall stand in his holy place he said you have clean hands that's not enough pure heart don't stop there and you don't lift up lift up your soul unto vanity and you don't come to testify in the king's court deceitfully you do not speak deceitfully in the presence of the king the king of kings the lord of laws is here king jesus is there in the service and when you come to give testimony don't be like that woman that somebody put words in your mouth and the word they put in your mouth is the word of deception and you and you say that and you say that confidently because they showed you how to practice that and you came to practice deception 
in the house of God. And then uh, we're saying, it's not the hand of so and so, not brother, profession, professional, so and so, worker, so and so. And the people that push them out like that say this way, move this way. And God is looking at you and saying, All right. That man is your God. You don't have any truth in your heart. You're like that woman. Now, the Joab and the woman, where are they now? That's what matters. Where will you spend eternity? That Joab, where is he now? And that woman of earthly wisdom, where is she now? Think about eternity. It says in answer to the question, Who shall ascend to the hill of the Lord? Who shall stand in his holy place? He that has clean hands and a pure heart, who has not lifted up his soul, her soul, unto vanity, nor sworn, nor spoken, nor testified, deceitfully i pray the lord will help us that will be conscious of what it means to get to heaven every time and whether we're in church or we're the crusade field or we're in the bus we're in the taxi we're in the plane we're in the house anywhere we are clean hands in jesus name pure heart in jesus name not lifting our hearts to vanity in Jesus' name. And not speaking, not swearing, not testifying deceitfully. We're coming to number three here. Number three is the quest of sincere seekers after the eternal God. It tells us in Psalm 24, I'm reading there from verse 5, he shall receive, it's coming from verse 4, he has clean hand. He has a pure heart. He has not lifted up his soul unto vanity. And he does not swear or speak deceitfully. That man, that woman, he shall receive blessing from the Lord. And righteousness from the God of his salvation. He has righteousness. And he has righteousness from God. The God of his salvation we live in a world of fake and genuine you know somebody buys you something uh, and uh, you say thank you but you know you look at it you say it is not made if it's spare part it's not genuine it's fake and the righteousness that can take us to heaven the righteousness that will take us to heaven is the righteousness from the god of our salvation it saves us it changes our lives it turns our lives around and then it says i need to deposit something in your life and it is this that will open the door automatically onto you i'm sure you know those automatic doors you have that chip or you have that uh, thing there and then as you are coming in uh, the door will recognize the chip and the door just opens like that the same thing uh, that when god gives you righteousness you are saved you are born again uh, and you have righteousness from the god of our salvation as you are entering like this heaven's door will recognize you yeah. and the door will just open but if you have the wrong kind of righteousness self-righteousness pharisees righteousness sadducees righteousness dressing righteousness but the righteousness is not in the heart then you come expecting the door to open and the door is closed then you come out you bang the door the banging does not open the door there is something you should have got and when you get that thing you don't have to bang the door the door will open the door of answers to prayer the door that will get you to the glorious heaven it says we have the righteousness from the god of our salvation look at verse 6 in verse 6 this is the generation of them that seek him that seek thy face oh 
Jacob. We're coming to point number three. Point number three, the indescribable prince of heaven throughout eternity. We're looking at Psalm 24. I'm reading from verse 7. Lift up your head to ye gates, and be ye lift up, ye everlasting doors, and the king of glory shall come in. In verse 8, who is this king of glory? The Lord strong and mighty. The Lord mighty in patrol. Verse 9, lift up your heads, O ye gates, and even lift them up ye everlasting doors and the king of glory shall come in then in verse 10 who is this king of glory the lord of hosts is he is the king of glory three things number one the coming of the king of glory number two the calling of his kids, the king's kids, to glory. Number three, the crowning of the king of glory. Look at number one. Number one, the coming of the king of glory. Verse 7 of Psalm 24. Lift up your heads, O ye gates, be ye lift up. Ye everlasting doors, everlasting doors, everlasting doors, and the king of glory shall come in. Now, look at the identity of the king of glory. We're looking at 1 Corinthians chapter 2. I'm reading from verse 7. 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 7. But we speak wisdom, the wisdom of God in a mystery even the hidden wisdom which god ordained before the world unto our glory look at verse 8 which none of the princes of this world knew not none of the princes of this world knew for at they known age they will not have crucified the lord of glory that identifies the king of glory the lord of glory the one that was crucified if they had known the plan of god if they had known of the grace of god they would not have crucified the lord of glory we look at first timothy chapter 1 verse 15 it says this is a faithful saying and what we are for lacks acceptation that christ jesus came into the world to save sinners of whom i am chief he's talking about jesus he came to the world for a purpose to save sinners and then when was he about to go away he said i came from the father i go to the father and at that first time when he came that time we're told that as he was talking to his disciples then he was received up and he was going up and went into heaven that's the first time when all those everlasting doors they opened up for the king of glory to come in and the king of glory went in and since that time he has been sitting on the right hand side of glory of god and when stephen was going to die the lord opened his eyes and he looked down and he said i see the son of man standing at the right hand of god he didn't come through the gates to come and take stephen he was there and he's still there and he's seated on the right hand of majesty on high let's go to number two now number two is the calling of the king's kids to glory is come because of what he has done the king of glory is now making glorious personalities out of us in hebrews chapter 2 reading from verse 9 and we, but we see Jesus, who is who was made a little lower than the angels for the suffering of death, 
crowned with glory and honor crowned with glory and honor that he by the grace of god should taste death for every man he died for the salvation of everyone and then in verse 10 for it became him it befitted him it suited him for whom are all things and by whom are all things in bringing many sons unto glory because of what he did on the cross of calvary is now bringing all that believe bringing many sons and daughters unto glory to make the captain of their salvation perfect through suffering then in verse 11 it says for both he christ that sanctifies and they the believers who are sanctified are all of one for which cause is not ashamed to call them brethren we're now the brethren of the lord he brings us to glory he calls us to glory second peter chapter one i'm reading from verse three in second peter chapter one reading here from verse three according as his divine power as given unto us all things that pertain to life and godliness through the knowledge of him that has called us tell me to glory and virtue by his first sacrifice in his first coming before he went and the gates of glory opened unto him to enter after he had by himself made acceptable sacrifice unto God for us at that time now all that he has done he now calls us to glory and to virtue and then in verse 4 in verse 4 it says whereby are given unto us exceeding great and precious promises that by these ye might be partakers of the divine nature having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lost amen You'll escape corruption in the world. Yeah. Corruption in the office. Yeah. Corruption in your community. Yeah. The corruption in politics. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. The corruption in church politics. Yeah. You'll overcome them in Jesus' name. Yeah. Corruption. If the corruption of the world is found in the church we're no different and we're not being prepared for glory when we're seeking offices election to be eligible in a christian society if we do it like the people of the world giving money associating campaigning they didn't do that to get the apostles of the New Testament. They didn't do that to get the leaders and the prophets and the evangelists and the teachers and the preachers of the New Testament. But if we now go through all the politics and then the race up our hand, we are the winner and we are the leader of this uh, Christian association now, we have not escaped the corruption. And when we go to pray and we cry and we fast and we're saying that God should deliver our nation from corruption, who are the people praying? The people himself who are immersed into corruption in seeking political position in the church. How can God hear that? If we're going to pray and we're going to do anything that will change the corruption in our land, the corruption in the church, the church at large, all that corruption will be taken away. And whether we're men or women, will not support corruption in any form, 
in the church of the living God because he calls us to glory that we might escape the corruption that is in the world through lust. I pray the Lord will clean up the church. The Lord will cleanse the church, purge and purify the church that the church will be glorious in Jesus' name. Look at number three here. Number three, the crowning of the king of glory. We'll come back to Psalm 24, and I'm reading from verse 8. Psalm 24, we're looking at verse 8. Who is this king of glory? But you asked the question earlier, who is the king of glory? Yes, I asked the, uh, that question because, uh, you know, we looked at all of heaven and we saw that the king of glory was missing. He's gone to the earth and he's going to make sacrifice for all sinners on earth. And when he finished, when he was coming that first time, uh, when he ascended to heaven, it's then the gates of a glory opened uh, and he entered in. But now we we'll see what we we'll see, what we we'll see is gone again. What has he gone to do now? The Antichrist is trying to possess the earth, and the Antichrist is trying to negate everything we have in Psalm 24 that the earth is the Lord's and the world and all that dwell therein. And the, uh, the Antichrist is mobilizing everybody, and he says, If you don't bow, you're born. If you don't uh, give yourself to me and he's going all over the world and deceiving so the king of glory had to come back and then with the breath of his mouth he destroyed the antichrist and he repaired and restored everything and he set up his millennial reign and that uh, serpent and that old serpent was put that satan put in the bottomless pit until the 1000 years will be over and then after the 1000 years are over over a time of reigning in peace and righteousness all over the earth then there was after that even after 1000 years satan was released and he went about to deceive all the people of the earth and jesus again came and he came and his name is the word of god is the lion of the tribe of judah and he smashed all the rebellion after that now I make a new heaven and a new earth and now it's about to go to heaven the king the lord of battle has won the battle and as he comes in they see him they say king of glory everybody shout king of glory he has overcome death, he has overcome the devil, he has overcome the old serpent, he has overcome everything on earth. There will be no rebellion again on the face of the earth and the king of glory in majesty, the king of glory in royalty, the king of glory in ultimate power is now entering in and they say who is this king of glory? The Lord strong and mighty, strong, stronger than the antichrist, strong, stronger than all the forces on earth and mighty in battle it says in verses in verse 9 lift up your heads now O ye gates and even lift them up ye everlasting doors and the king of glory shall come in and the king of glory shall come in the joy of heaven the joy of earth the joy of the angels the joy of the saints and the joy of everyone in the universe let him come in and then we're told in verse 10 who tell me that i will never doubt tell me that i'll never look in any other direction tell me that my heart will never be given to any other person tell me who is this king of glory and when he comes to my heart when he comes to live with me what kind of glorious life will i have tell me tell me who is this king of glory the lord the sovereign 
the all in all the one that reigns and then there is no contradiction the one that is in heaven after satan and the false prophet and the beast and the people who did not follow the lord after they are sealed up in hell forever but the one who lives forever who is this king of glory the lord of hosts he is the king of glory somebody say amen, amen. and then sailor sailor that means think about that meditate on that pause and think as we're going back home think about that what is the king of glory now he says behold i stand at the door and knock if any man any woman any boy any girl hears my voice and opens the door if the king of glory is going to get into heaven and all those gates will open i bought you there for you to go with him on that final day you must open the gates and the doors of your heart and you must tell him king of glory coming make of heaven and earth coming the savior of my soul coming redeemer come in and then he says i will come in and sup and fellowship with you and the fellowship will continue until the final day when you will enter can you see the gate can you see heaven like stephen saw can you see lord jesus receive my spirit and the lord will receive you on that day Let's rise up and pray unto the Lord. Tell the Lord, tell the Lord, O oh Lord, King of glory, enter. Come in. And the King of glory will come in. Open your mouth and talk to the Lord in prayer.